Hi, friends. I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week, I invite you to slow down and join me to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. Well, if you don't already have your simplified planner, there's still time for you to embark on your own fresh start. Just head over to emilylay.com to choose between daily, weekly, or monthly options before they're gone. Let me ask you an important question. What's better than feeling cozy? Well, that's a tough one because honestly, there's hardly anything better than feeling snug and warm and cozy with your people. Bonus points if it's a little cool and gray outside and there's soup on the stove and a warm cup of tea or hot chocolate on the coffee table. I might live in Florida, but I still love a cozy day when it's cold outside. After a summer of sun and adventure, I feel like we've earned these cooler days that invite us to savor the small things like wrapping up in a soft sweater and reading for a bit in the morning or tucking in with your kid and watching a spooky movie with a bowl of popcorn in your lap. Home is one of my favorite places on earth, and this time of year, I love adding little touches that bring a dose of cozy to our days. Whether that's adding some throw blankets for texture and color and maximum snuggling, or a touch of whimsy with some paper bats in flight around the fireplace for Halloween, or choosing a Christmas color palette and shaping my decor around it. I love creating a cozy home that leans into the season, especially this time of year. You know who else is good at that? My guest today, who has some wise words about cozy. She says that cozy is about transforming our own little corner of the world into a private refuge, and I could not agree more. And y'all, let me tell you, I am over the moon that Liz Marie Galvin is our guest on the show today. So many of you know and love Liz, but if you're new to her, you're going to be so glad to get to know her. Liz is an author, wife to Jose, and mama to Copeland Bow, and she's the co-owner of a home decor boutique, The Found Cottage. Liz blogs every day on her website, lizmarieblog.com, where thousands of people go for tips and inspiration, whether she's blogging about life on her farm, her 1800s fixer-upper farmhouse in Michigan, her latest DIY project, or even her adoption journey. And she's collaborated with some of the biggest brands in the world, HGTV, Williams Sonoma, TJ Maxx, Home Depot, even Magnolia Home Paint. She is an absolute force and also so genuine and kind, the absolute best. Liz is a wonderful writer, and her latest book is called Cozy White Cottage Seasons, where she takes you by the hand and shows you easy ways to decorate and bring cozy into your home every season. And today, Liz and I got to talk about how to make your home a cozy space for your family this fall and winter. And let me tell you, I can't wait to share her tips and tricks with you. I am so excited you're here. So let's get to it. Grab a cup of hot tea and enjoy my conversation with designer Liz Marie Galvin. Well, Liz, hi. I feel like we could chat forever and ever. We were just chatting about the evolution of social media and Instagram over the last few years because you and I have both been doing this a very long time. So I'm so excited to meet you. For anybody who is not familiar with you and your work, can you just introduce yourself and tell us all about what you do? Yes. Well, first of all, it's an honor to be here. I was so excited to talk to you today. And I hope our conversations are helpful to anyone listening. But I am Liz Marie from lizmarieblog.com and also now the Cozy White Cottage book series. We wrote Cozy White Cottage Seasons, and it's 100 tips to make your home cozy all year long. And I currently live on a small farmette in Midwest Michigan, to be exact. And we have some alpacas and sheep and bees and cats and dogs and <laughs> now a toddler as well. So That's it's amazing. always an adventure here. I want to come visit your alpacas. <laughs> I, I think about this all the time. I wish everyone could come experience it. It is therapy for me. I know That's it's a amazing. lot of work, but the animals are just amazing and they make our farm cozy for sure. Oh my gosh, that that is so much fun. So when this episode airs, it will be hopefully a little cooler outside and we'll be embarking on fall. And I love fall for many reasons. I love football. I don't understand it, but I like the atmosphere and I like the snacks. <laughs> same, same. Right? And I love yes. kind of getting our home ready for fall and transitioning from summer where we're, I mean kind of all over the place and everything's hot to more indoors and a slower season and all of that. So 
First things first, which elements would you say are like your must-haves when it comes to fall decor, both inside and outside your home? I will probably repeat this so many times throughout this episode talking about fall, but I love the natural elements, elements that I could go into my garden and find. So pumpkins and gourds, mums, just all of those natural elements inside and out. I'm not much of a very literal fall person, like pillows with pumpkins all over it. I want to do it with color and natural elements. I love that. And like texture. And I also love that because sometimes when the seasons change and we're, we're thirsty for like a refresh in our home, it's easy to be like, I need to run to the store. You know, I need to run to the place and find, you know, lots of new things to bring inside their house. And sometimes depending on how you do it, it can be adding more clutter than it is actual decor, right? And so I love that you recommend like going out and finding things. I mean, obviously it's great to go and find new decorations and things at stores sometimes, but I think it's great to find things you already have also. Yeah, that was me before. I used to buy like entire aisles at Home Goods every year and I would be sick of it next year. But I do share a lot of fall decor sources that you can buy from stores on my blog Mm -hmm. and like my Instagram. But I'm always sure to put a reminder up like you do not need new fall decor every year, but you might like these items. So I always put a disclaimer there because you do feel like that when the season comes that you need new things. But when you buy pillows and throws and elements that are in your color palette, you're never going to get sick of it. And you can just put them away and take them out next year. It's not literal fall decor. I love that. We love Christmas here. And so decorating our home for Christmas is like the big transition. And for years, I was doing the same thing, like going out and buying, you know, XYZ that I would find in the stores and none of it really matched or anything. And I finally got to a place where I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy like one or two items a year and they're going to be high quality, really nice fit with the, you know, color scheme or whatever it is we're going for. And then they're, they become like little heirlooms that, you can pass on and and they just work year to year to year. Yeah. And that's another, that's a great point because another thing I love doing is going to antique shops or flea markets in the summer and yeah. finding seasonal items that are old. I started doing that for Halloween. I know not everyone is like a Halloween decorator, but I love finding these vintage elements. First of all, you're not participating in like fast fashion or anything. You know, it's reusing these things and things can be really cheap. They'll be like a dollar for these really cool vintage ghosts. You know what I mean? So so fun. Yeah, I would definitely check your local antique shops or flea markets for seasonal decor. And like off season. So Christmas, I always know like after Christmas, we bought a Balsam Hill tree and we waited until after Christmas to buy it when it went on sale. And a lot of people are probably donating those kinds of things too at that point, right? Oh yeah. Like right after Christmas, if you go the week after, because everyone's off work the week after Christmas or some people are. And so they're purging. They're very sick of everything. So check your local thrift shop because you'll find something. But (laughs) I always speak to that too. When I say you don't need new decor, we're not even just talking about clutter, but also budget. Yeah. If you go out of budget while doing your seasonal decor, it's not cozy. You're going to be sitting there stressing You know, so I always say, like you said, you know, shop out of season or right after the season, everything is marked down. I love that. When you're decorating for a specific like holiday or specific season, do you find that you undecorate first? Like you put some things away before you put others out? Oh, yes. This is my number one tip in my book. I say that I cannot decorate on top of stuff. It's almost like It's almost like the makeup of your home. You're not going to add more makeup on top of your makeup. You know, wash your face, you know, do your skincare routine and then put it on and it will feel so fresh and good. So I always hated when people would talk about like just spring cleaning. Yeah, It's seasonal cleaning for me. I want to do a deep clean at the entrance of every season and then do the decorating and it will feel so good. That is so true. Christmas time used to always kind of overwhelm me a bit because there was just more stuff everywhere until I figured out like, okay, I need to actually put away the things that I'm like, if I'm bringing out throw pillows, I need to put our other throw pillows under a bed or somewhere, right? To like get them out of the way. So it doesn't just feel cluttery. 
Yes. And a tip about the pillows too, is I always just buy the pillow covers. It's cheaper. Brilliant. And then I keep the same forms. So I don't have a closet full of pillow pillows. forms. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? You could just vacuum pack or put it in a container, all your new pillow covers. Okay. I love that. That's smart. Very smart. Okay. So tell me about, I know you're so good at incorporating, like you said, flowers and foliage and all kinds of like natural textures and things into your space, but the real stuff takes a little maintenance to keep up, right? Like the real flowers, the real things. And then if you're me, it dies. And sometimes I'm just lazy and I don't water things. So let's say I want to fill my space with real flowers or real foliage and that kind of thing. But I decide like, I want to do it with the fake stuff, right? So what's the best way to get a good bang for my buck there? Like to get something that that maybe looks real or doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance, but still kind of gives that same vibe. Yeah, so I love real plants, real foliage, but I'm also team faux because yeah. I cannot possibly remember to water plants in every single room and not every room has the right amount of light, light things like yeah. that. So I I love mixing the two. And I honestly, if you can, there are a ton of low maintenance plants. I actually have a bunch listed in my book along with where to find really good faux. Yeah. But if you can mix the two, it makes the faux look even more real. Oh. But the good thing is, is all of us consumers are wanting more real looking plants and people are listening. Yeah. And so there are really good faux options that look real. Last year, I found this pumpkin source and these pumpkins, they fool everybody. They look real, but they're wow. fake. And so really not settling for the the very you know cheap faux mm -hmm. option, really invest in real looking greenery because you'll want to use it every year. Yeah. And instead of buying fake things that you kind of, oh, whatever, it's cheap every year. Yeah. You know, and then you don't like them really invest in the real looking foliage. It is going to probably be a little bit more, Yeah. but places like Hobby Lobby are really stepping up their game and they always do 50% off or 40% off every other week, but really, you know, and I try to share these sources daily on the blog in my Instagram when I find it, because yeah. I get really excited about the faux too. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I have an orchid from Frontgate that I've had forever and ever and ever. And it's so pretty and so real looking and it just stays out like all year long. Yeah. And it, you invested in it. It probably wasn't just $4, right. but <laughs> it's that investment that really brings life to your space. Like yeah. the number one answer to bringing life to a space that maybe looks kind of dull and just uninviting is adding in plant. And yeah. so that's a really good investment and it won't die if it's fake. So this is true. even if I forget yeah. water. <laughs> yeah. You might just like have to dust it. <laughs> just a little bit. Just have to dust yeah. it. Yeah. Guys, I am this close to crossing the finish line on my latest book. You know what that means? Meal prep has 100% fallen off my radar because I don't have time to cook something healthy that requires a lot of steps, which is why I love Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. And whatever your lifestyle looks like, Green Chef has options for you, like keto and paleo, vegan and vegetarian. And lately, we've been loving the keto options like beef tenderloin with garlic broccoli, coconut chicken soup, and pecan crusted salmon. And now Green Chef is offering 10 minute lunches. Each week they offer two healthy lunches that are ready in just 10 minutes, no cooking required. So no matter what your fall looks like, you can get healthy dinners on the table fast with Green Chef. Go to greenchef.com slash simplified135 and use code simplified135 to get $135 off across five boxes and your first box ships free. One more time, go to greenchef.com slash simplified135 and get $135 off across five boxes plus free shipping on your first box with code simplified135. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. I'm a big believer in supporting women-owned businesses, which is why I'm so pumped to tell you about this incredible sponsor, Printfresh. 
Print Fresh was created by textile designer and fashion entrepreneur Amy Voloshin. In the early days, Amy packed and shipped every order out of her own home, just like I did. And now Print Fresh has grown into a nationally loved sleepwear and home goods brand made for lovers of pattern and seekers of whimsy. Do you want some new PJs for fall? The answer is yes, you absolutely do. Each pajama set from Print Fresh is made of 100% organic cotton and with sizes from extra small to 6X and free exchanges, everyone can find their perfect fit for the chillier days ahead. You guys know I love a good pattern and Print Fresh has some fantastic ones for fall. I just got the Bagheera cami nightgown in sapphire and I absolutely love it. It's just the right length and so cute. Plus, it's gotten even softer every time I wash it. They are the holy grail of pajamas. So whether you're getting a head start on holiday shopping or giving your PJ drawer a refresh, head to printfresh.com slash simplified or use code simplified for 15% off your first order and let the fall fun begin. One more time, that's printfresh.com slash simplified or use code simplified for 15% off your first order. The older I get, the more I notice when my body kind of feels off. If you've been feeling that way too and aren't sure why, then trying Everly Well might be a good first step for you. Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you, all at an affordable price. With over 30 at-home lab tests, you can choose a test that helps you get the answers you need, like the women's health test or food sensitivity test. Here's how it works. Everly Well ships products straight to you with everything you need in one package. To take your at-home lab test, simply collect your sample and use the prepaid shipping label to mail your test back to a certified lab. Then your physician reviewed results get sent to your phone in days. Guys, I'm a huge fan of Everly Well. I've used their food sensitivity test, the women's health test, and the thyroid test. Each one was so easy to do and gave me really detailed results. The women's health test was especially eye-opening for me. I shared my Everly Well results with my doctor at my annual exam, and she was able to help me find ways to feel more like my best self. So start living your healthier tomorrow. Everly Well is giving my listeners a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash simplified. That's everlywell.com slash simplified for 20% off your next at-home lab test. everlywell.com slash simplified. One of my favorite things about fall, other than making everything cozy and welcoming for people to come and get together, is fall food. And I know that you have some good recipes. Tell us about your favorite go-to cozy meal for fall. I am here for the food in every single season. I can't yes. pick a favorite, but I love the fall things you can pull from the garden. You know, I, my favorite is so simple and I make this daily. It's acorn squash and Yum. I cut it in half and then I just put it on a cookie sheet and I'll do like a savory one yeah. with like tons of butter and spices. And then I'll do a sweet one with butter and like brown sugar. Yum. And that kind of reminds me of my childhood and I just eat it out with a spoon and yeah. I, I'm obsessed with that. But anything, you know, like apple crisp and yeah. those things that are like warm, you know, I just comfort food, but you know, it's harvested that time of year yeah. because when you save it for that time of year too, it's extra special. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can do these things all year round now that we like ship produce everywhere, but yeah. it's kind of cool to save some of your favorite, you know, I love doing like pumpkin soups. Yeah. Anything like that. And I just, I kind of want it all now. <laughs> Yummy. That sounds great. Have you yeah. ever had delicata squash? I don't think I have. Okay. You have to How search. do you prepare it? You have to find it. So I have never made it myself. My mom has made it and I've had it with her and I've had it at a, a local restaurant here, but it, you cut it in like thin little pieces, little slices, and you lay it out on a baking sheet. And kind of like you said, you can make it sweet or savory, but it is delicious. So you have to look for I am it going this to, fall. Yes, I will search that. Any kind of squash. I'm a huge yeah. squash fan. So I probably will be obsessed with that. Okay, yum. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about winter because it will be here before we know it. So when you're decorating for winter, what would you say are your go-to elements? So again, anything that I feel like I could find on our farm, and I know not everyone lives on a farm, but I love that natural look where it's like, did she go out in the woods and gather all of this yeah. and bring it in the house? So I'm looking for, I love mixing in the real elements like the garlands and the pines and stuff like that. But for my faux foliage, I just love the realistic and I love investing in like pine garlands that look real yeah. and wreaths that look real. And I also love investing 
in like the non-holiday specific winter things because I Mm. can use them for Christmas and then I can use them still into the winter. So that investment gets me two seasons, you know, every single year instead of just the one. So, you know, I love using like, again, realistic full pine garlands. And then if it's Christmas time, you know, I'll put some like silver ornaments on it on the mantle. And then come winter, I'll take those ornaments off and it's good for winter. And another tip I have is like never take greenery at face value. And what I mean by that is you're going to buy that pine garland, but then when you get it, let's mix in some pine stems into it Fun. You know, to make it fuller and to make it more custom to yeah. your look. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So when you do when you do a garland, like let's say I have a staircase and you do a garland, would you recommend looking for something that's faux or is it worth it to like go for the real stuff? You know, I do a lot of real and it does get really annoying. I will admit that. And that's the only time I've admitted that because unless like I love real. So to me, sometimes it is worth the cleanup, but it is daily. And when you're bumping it, there are pine needles everywhere. I got like a little handheld Bissell vacuum that I just kind of, you know, will clean up every single day, but it is annoying. And I will admit that. So I have found, and I, I share these yearly, they sell out really quick, but I have found such realistic looking pine garlands. Oh, cool. It's kind of taken over that need for the real for me. I love the smell. Yeah. I don't even do a real Christmas tree. I'll do real ones on our porch, Same. but I do faux because I mean, they make such good faux options now. They do. And now that I'm a mom to a toddler, I <laughs> I kind of like the faux. So that's so, my yeah. story about the garland. We had one year, my twins were tiny. They were like maybe toddlers. And a friend sent me like olive wreath, olive branches or some was made out of something that had olives in it. And these things were everywhere, everywhere. And I was so afraid one of my babies was going to get one of the olives. And so we ended up actually having to take it down before Christmas because it was such a hassle. It was gorgeous, just gorgeous, but maybe not worth the work, at least in that season of life. At this point, my seven-year-olds would not pick up an olive and eat it off the ground, but with little bitty ones, you know. Yeah, you they're unpredictable. And you know, there's like pros and cons. And again, there's like space for that. Yep. You know, if you have a space like more of an unused room or on a door, yeah, you know, there's there's a space for that in every season. But everyone listening and you and I even, we're all in different seasons of life. For so sure. Things can seem worth it to someone and not to someone else. But social media kind of makes that hard too because you know, I'll be sharing something and someone's like, oh, that's not worth it. And I'm like, well, to you, you know, yeah. we're all, we all have to remember as we're scrolling that everyone's in a different season, has different passions, goals. You know what I mean? So that's yeah, kind of sure. hard to remember. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Okay. I have some rapid fire questions for you, but before we get there, I have one more question. So one thing you say that I absolutely love is that there are no rules. So let's talk about that a little bit. I think that is so good. Yeah, I I feel like that's kind of a great follow up to what I was just saying is that, you know, as we're scrolling on social media and I I do this and so that's why I wrote about it in my book as well is I am like, oh, I'm not allowed to put that chandelier that low above the table. The rule is and mm-hmm. and I catch myself, there are no rules. If yeah. it works for you and your family and the function of your home or you find it cozy, there you go. That's the rule because That's it's rule. your household. And I love getting comments on the videos I share or the photos I share that are like, this isn't cozy if I call it like a cozy pumpkin mantle. <laughs> and someone's like, this isn't cozy. I love that. And I don't take offense to it because I take it as a teaching opportunity to be like, yeah. oh, it's cozy to me. But cozy to you is always going to look different because yeah. it's your five senses being at peace. And so we're also so different. Good. We prefer different tastes, different yeah. colors, different smells. And so that's what I love sharing. So there are no rules. Of course, you know, I went to school for interior design. So I, you know, learned all of the quote unquote rules. And those are very helpful. Like how high should I hang my art? You know, you can yeah. Google all of these things. Those are a great starting point. But if you were like, oh, well, I don't like my art that high or that low hang it somewhere else. It's your (laughs) home and people are always going to have something to say, but it's your rules. So that's what we mean by there are no rules. I love that. 
I really do. I love that. It's we, We've kind of adopted this attitude with some of business and social media and things of like, says who? We don't have to do, we don't always have to do it the way they say, you know, we can, we can kind of carve our own path. So I love that. Okay. I have three rapid fire questions for you. So like whatever just comes to your brain, you just spit it out. Got All it. right. Think about your average week in the fall. When do you feel the most cozy? Oh, that's such a great question. I'm going to go with family outings, you know, pumpkin patches and just like having those moments where they kind of freeze time. Yeah. And you can look around and seeing everyone enjoying that like fall bucket list. Yeah. That's cozy to me and watching our son just like enjoy the seasons and seeing the magic of childhood. I love that. Yeah, that's cozy. Totally agree. Okay, what is your go-to topping for a caramel apple? Oh, yeah, more food. I'm going <laughs> to go with the classic and do like caramel and nuts and maybe a little bit of chocolate in there. But I Yum. love dip. I eat, I don't know anyone listening or that follows me knows, I eat an apple dipped in peanut butter and chocolate every single day. Yum. I've never missed a day. It's that sounds amazing. kind of my favorite thing all year long. <laughs> No, I want one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's your favorite fall memory with your son and with Jose? Oh, this is so good. So we, this is my plug for like local farmers and farm stands and things like this. Support your local farms and buy pumpkins from them and your local like farm stands, but also check your local farms because a lot of them will do really fun hay rides. Yeah. And we have so many around us living on a farm. We have so many, but we went to this one and you go through this like woods, this winding woods on a hay ride. And you look for like, they hang little bees in the tree. So it's like Cute. a scavenger hunt. And it's just so fun again, to see the magic of seasons through their eyes. It makes everything worth it. I know like the holidays are super busy, but just like slowing down and doing things for the kids is what's most important. Amen. Liz, thank you so much for doing this. Can you tell everybody where they can find you and find your books? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Again, such an honor. You can find me on social media, Liz Marie Galvan, my blog, LizMarieBlog.com. I'm now on TikTok under Liz Marie Blog, and I'm trying to <laughs> this TikTok thing, which is kind of fun. But also my book, Cozy White Cottage Seasons and Cozy White Cottage can be found on Amazon, Walmart, Target, Barnes & Noble, anywhere where books are sold. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, well, that was so much fun. I loved talking all things cozy and home with Liz, and I feel like she was just full of ideas I would not have ever thought of. As we close out this episode today, I want to say a blessing for you as we leave this time together and get back to our days. As you ready your home for a season of gathering, may you adorn the walls with the little things that make your heart sing. May you gather the people who bring laughter and light into your days. And above all, I hope you enjoy the blessings of the season and feel comfort in joy and abundance. As always, I like to leave a little tip to help you put what we talked about today into practice. So here's your task for this week. I know it might feel a little early for this tip, but hear me out. If you need a good Christmas tree this holiday season, I can't recommend the Trees and Garland from Balsam Hill enough. This is not sponsored, I just absolutely love them. They're the most full and beautiful and natural looking trees I've ever seen. So well made and so sturdy. We can't do real trees in the lay house because of allergies, but we hardly miss them. Plus, what might be the best part is that Balsam Hill has the best ways to store trees and ornaments because they have storage bags that roll. So not only is setup easy, so is cleanup. And that is a win all around in my book. Thank you for listening to The Simplified Podcast. I hope today's episode sparked a few ideas to make your home a cozy space you and your people can enjoy in the cooler weather. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can also check out links and resources I mentioned here and shop the simplified brand of planners and products. You can also watch my interview with Liz over on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash simplified by Emily Lay. And don't forget to pick up your copy of my kid's book called You're Always Enough right now, wherever you buy books. Before you go, I have a quick favor to ask. If you love this show, would you go over to your podcast provider and leave a review? I want more people reaching for a life that's a bit more slow and sweet and good. And leaving a review helps your podcast provider get this show to more people who will enjoy it. If you've left a review, thank you. Please know I've read your words and taken them to heart. Until next time, thanks so much for listening. Bye.